Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. It is the DJ Roundtable. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. And I have also just walked in the door is DJ Brentley <laughs> from Wisconsin. As always, we have a great amount of DJs here tonight. And always, we have you as well. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you're watching the recap, <laughs> you're watching the repeat of the show. Uh, you always watch us live on Tuesday nights on Twitch, where we're live. And you can also ask questions in the chat. Uh, I see Jeff, one of our panel, is in the chat and also, again, yeah, I will answer as soon as I can, too. It's always great to have people and have you guys out there watching. Uh, hopefully that, uh, again, you're watching this on YouTube. Do me a favor. Click that like button. Make sure you smash the subscribe button and also click the bell icon. The one thing is that I see a lot of people are watching the show but are not subscribed. And subscribing helps out a lot. Um and I'm dealing with allergies, so. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> this Bless is real you. life, folks. <laughs> uh, trees are high here in Chicago tonight, and uh, I am, trees are on my downfalls. And I just had a wedding this past weekend. Uh, the ceremony was outside. The uh, reception's inside. And, um, yeah, um, still everything's high here. But thank goodness I have some – I have a Dyson – air purifier right behind me fan with the HEPA filter that's running. I won my living room um, or as we say here in Chicago, the front room um, that is a Chicago city of Chicago thing, which uh, Brentley is originally from here. So he knows what that means, <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to get into it. And uh, again, Hunter uh, DJ cool thing. He is under the weather. He is in the chat. Um, and again, Hunter, I hope you'll feel better brother. Um, just relax, sit back and, uh, uh, drink some herbal tea or some soup or whatever, and, uh, feel better soon. And I see you, Jim. Hello, sir. How are you out there in LA? Uh, hopefully you're enjoying yourselves out there. Uh, as you know, fall is coming in the air and like here in Chicago, we have our lovely fall weather. Uh, we're, you know, in Wisconsin in the, uh, the sixties down to the thirties, like tonight, we're supposed to get some, uh, we have, uh, frost warnings and i'm sure where uh dj brentley's age he's probably got frost or freeze warnings up there and you're we muted right freezing now. last night there you go that's why i need i need a good freeze and knock these trees down so i'm 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 on my misery for the allergies for the rest of the year <laughs> until the spring hits then i'm back in it <laughs> yeah but you know spring and fall and so forth so on all the different weather around the country it's always different and it's always great and as a DJ, I always feel that you have overcome those things. So with that said, um, have a question for the panel. This is a couple of questions from you out there in YouTube land, as well as you out there in Twitch. Uh, you go submit your questions in the chat here on Twitch or on YouTube. Please make sure that you put your uh, questions, comments, critiques, criticisms, tomfoolery, anything down below. Uh, we want to read and see what you say. Uh, first thing first, this is from DJ Aga. Um, as always, he always gets some great questions. Um, he is asking, is everyone getting a lot of requests for karaoke as part of their services for holiday parties this year? I'm hoping this is a quick trend. I don't plan on offering it with any party package that can be uh, miserable listening to uh, <laughs> listening to one or, or two people think that uh, everyone came there to see them in a concert or a few loud drunk people screaming into a microphone to a Metallica song. I will pass. How about you all? So uh, I can say for myself, doing weddings, uh, I don't offer karaoke. I highly, highly, highly uh, tell customers I highly, highly do not recommend having karaoke at a wedding because of said tomfoolery that happens with adult beverages. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go out to North Carolina to uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, uh, do you offer karaoke? And would you offer karaoke for someone asking for one of your events? 
Uh, yeah, I do have a limited karaoke since I have a, um, uh, a video display on the front of my DJ booth. Uh, it's just, you know, I offer it. I've got about 300 songs. That's, you know, not a lot, but, you know, it's, it is, it, it, it suffices. Um, I have not re received a lot of requests for it. Uh, I just did receive one for a Sweet 16 I'm doing coming up um, at the end of this, this month. They want some karaoke. I did it for a Sweet 16 about a year ago, last December. Um, and, you know, kids at that age, you, you it's kind of hit or miss. You know, you, you would, I was thinking they're not going to they're not going to sing to any karaoke and uh, they don't know anything about karaoke boy was i wrong yeah those kids tore it up and um yeah i mean it, it was crazy so um so yeah i guess it depends on the crowd the kids but um yeah i, I agree with you buddy i would never uh, offer it at a wedding unless they paid me a, a huge amount of money to do it. And then I would say, sure, you know, it's, it's your money. If that's what you require, then I will be glad to do it. But it's not something that is normally done at a wedding. You're right. So cool thing chimed in and again, uh, uh, he's under the weather and he is off camera relaxing. Uh, I, I never get a request to do karaoke at any event. Good. Cause it's, <laughs> I can tell you from personal experience from dealing with it and doing it, actually building, I still have in my garage right now, a karaoke build from 2009 that's sitting there right now with the DVDs. So I have the DVDs for it too. So <laughs> I was sitting there, uh, didn't do well, I've lost money on that endeavor. Uh, DJ Brantley, the land of garbage cans and also the land of beer. And if you guys don't know, I saw uh, that. I'm, in a, <laughs> I'm in a group with DJ Bradley and I asked DJ Salsa to come there because some of the things are funny. It's a DJ group. And one of the things they have are just running thing in, in his group of, of garbage cans everywhere. And I just laugh at it. I always get a smirk of it. And there's a couple people who complain about it, which I don't understand. I'm like, it's humor. It's funny. Uh, we don't run it at down here in Illinois with garbage cans everywhere, but it seems like poor Brentley, he gets two things going on at his weddings. Either one, he's wearing a cape, or two, he's next to a, a, a garbage can, which is not a bad thing because that way at least the drunk people have some place to put their garbage in and not on your gear. So I, I, don't, I don't blame it too bad. <laughs> so we, up we there... Judge it. I, I judge it by, uh, instead of garbage cans, I judge... Uh, budgets by chairs if they have the cheap plastic folding chairs that that would crumple under a couple hundred pounds of weight or if they've got those crappy folding white chairs like like you could just tell they didn't spend money if they've got the nice clear chiavari chairs or they've got the gold ones then you know that there's some some good money spent there and the or other chair thing covers. is because you can have no 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 chair covers are Chair covers here are telltale sign that they're Latin. Uh, I've never seen that at any event besides a Spanish event here. Um, well, I here think it's, 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 it's a lot of it weddings so here. Um, the, the nice, nice couples, you can tell they spend a lot when they have two sets of chairs and they don't have to take the chairs from ceremony to the reception. But that's, yeah. Garbage cans, I don't even notice. <laughs> but See, they, up, up here with garbage cans, if they have the big, like, industrial construction, you know, garbage cans. Metal ones, yeah. Uh, no, the big plastic ones that like you'll see in nightclubs that are for college kids, along with construction sites, just don't take the gig there. Avoid. Just avoid. It's <laughs> you, you are in for a day and a half of just crap. Whereas if you don't see them anywhere, go there because they actually care. They're going to have people, their staff is going to be everywhere, bussing tables, pulling empty drinks, picking up anything they see on the floor. There's a big difference up here with that. So the other thing I would say, uh, the other caveat I would say to that is make sure you go to a venue that doesn't have floor drains because they have floor drains in the middle of your dance floor. They're expecting <laughs> something to happen. And I've only seen that once at one place. And that was early on in the career when I would, was starting out doing DJ, uh, mobile DJing. And that was uh, a very unique experience. The nice thing was when they, someone did spill something, it was easily pushed right into that drain. But uh, it was not very uh, expensive. Yeah, I, wedding, never, so. I never understand why a lot of bougie venues have carpet. You would think like if they're turning over weddings day after day after day, 
What if somebody spilled some red wine on that nice plush carpeting? There's no way you're going to clean that and make it spotless before the next day. Like, that's just, that's crazy I, you know, to me. A I, lot of the places- I've actually run into that. Yeah. And the Cargill room here in La Crosse, they have a really nice carpet. And where we're allowed to store our gear is where they have their carpet cleaning machine. So if anything goes wrong, it comes out right at the end of the night. And they start on that first and then get to everything else. Makes sense. Yeah. That, the, the ones here I've always see they have uh they have a, a decent sized car <clears> machine, <throat> you know, commercial not a commercial grade one, but not like you know, you're gonna do the whole room with it, but they get spot clean. It's a big machine and it's you know, a push machine. It's not like you go to rent one, it's bigger than that. But they'll do spots in the areas they have problems, but they will have professional cleaning services come with the truck and everything, and do that every so often. Uh, one of the venues I know, they do it every single month. So the first of the month on a weekdays, uh, they'll have the whole all the whole facility. They'll have the floating walls open, and they'll have the whole facility um, uh, rugs cleaned throughout the whole entire building. And they do it every single month. But they have problems that happen, which do glasses of wine, food, ketchup, you know, barbecue sauce in the kids with chicken fingers. Whatever it is, they clean it up real quickly. And those areas, yeah, they'll bring the rug cleaner out and clean, scrub those areas um, r- right away. So that way people don't walk and there's no odor, no smell, and there's no stains. But going back to karaoke, DJ Brentley, who's got off an attendant of garbage cans, uh, the land of garbage cans and capes. What do you do for karaoke, yep. sir? I will do it at a wedding. I won't. It's not my day. I really don't care. If you don't, if you and your friends want to do karaoke and sing your favorite hits and get, you know, push it, you know, do your thing like you do with doing a you know a normal karaoke bar, I'm all about it. I mean, especially now that I've got the toad and I can, you know, split it, put, you know, everybody can see the lyrics. Somebody else can, you know, have a TV to their right. I'm okay with it. I mean, do I get it asked very often? Maybe once every couple of years. I had one this year. And one engagement party that wanted karaoke. But they were all theater folks who used to come to my karaoke night here at the Driftless Arcade all the time. So when they brought me in for that, I kind of knew what the whole story was and expected it. But more often than not, most people don't want karaoke. And the last one I did karaoke on this year, the real wedding, uh, I kind of pushed the issue to do karaoke. And I hate to say it, to kill the reception. Because it was already going really bad. Um, there were some, the wedding party had taken over the place the night before. So, and this venue, you can, I'm not going to call names up because the gig logs are already up. But you can take over the venue Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as long as you leave by 8 a.m. Monday. And this is how you found it on Friday when you showed up. You can do whatever you want there. So they got there Friday and by Saturday morning, everybody in the wedding party was dog meat. There was there was no salvaging a reception out of the twelve person wedding party that had one groomsman puking on the side of the altar be- during picture time before the ceremony. There was no coming back from it, and I knew it when I walked in the door. So after we did about an hour of dancing, and I could already see people, you know, either too drunk, too tired, ready to pass out already. I went straight to the bride and groom like, you asked for karaoke? Let's just do it now while people are getting tired of dancing. Knowing it was going to kill the rest of the reception everybody was going to take off. 45 minutes later, after one woman sang her love song in a different language that no one really understood and liked and decided to leave while she was singing, it was her, her two kids, and her husband in the room at the end of it, and that was that. Bride came in right after, said, we're done. And that was 9 o'clock on a Saturday. I was literally home by 10 o'clock. Gear stood up by 10.30 and downtown in La Crosse by 11. But, yeah, so I'll do it. I have no objection to it. It's your day. You tell me what you want. And, of course, you're going to pay for it, mind you, because now i got to bring TV. Now I've got to bring, you know, install the compression rack to my mics again and all of that. So there's a few extra things I have to bring out for it. But, yeah, I'll do it. You're, you know, three to 500 bucks. We're good. Okay. DJ Salsa is out there in California. Do you, uh, do you throw in uh karaoke or decide to do karaoke uh, or add karaoke or option for karaoke or. 
I offer it. It's on my brochure. Um, I've had it a couple times, only at Filipino weddings, um, because Filipino people love karaoke, uh, really. Um, but no, I don't really. It's not not really a thing. Um, I do karaoke, not a lot, but a couple times a year for corporate events. I just use Carafun, which is a great. $10 a month software. You can even pay $4 for a party pass for a weekend. It's got 50,000 songs and it keeps adding them every day and the newest stuff. And you can browse it with a QR code. So it's really cutting edge software and it's you know, easy to run. And I use a projector or a couple TVs, but no, I only done it once at a wedding. And I mean, it went great. They loved it. But uh, yeah, karaoke is not really for a wedding. I feel like if you want to do it, sure. But it, I feel like it's just... It's more for a Christmas party, more for Christmas parties. I, I and I just I, I just look at a wedding and go, ah, I just feel it, it it will devolve into the uh, Lord of the Flies at the wedding, <laughs> karaoke and singing. Uh, and I got asked my neighbor to the east of me in Ohio, the great state of Ohio, Dwayne Dixon. I got to ask you, sir, karaoke, yes or no? If someone asks for it, do you do karaoke? Do you offer karaoke? Do you think karaoke should be offered? I have it on my brochure as an add-on. And so the the for this birthday party that I did last year, they did karaoke and they loved it. And um the graduation party I did um last month, I was prepared to do karaoke because that spot, that club was a karaoke spot. And the guy I did the um party for as well, you know, he does karaoke all the time. So they was begging him to sing, but he didn't do it. But, and then as far as the weddings, um, there was one wedding that kind of like turned into an impromptu karaoke. It wasn't set up for it. They just sat that phone and the bride said they can use the mic and sing. So that person sung a couple of songs. Then other than that, I've noticed that in, I'm on Bark. A few um of my bark leads had came in asking for karaoke, so that's we because we're getting ready to go into the um Christmas season, so mm -hmm. that's that's about the only time I would see karaoke. But yeah, I offer it, and I have a small TV, or if they just want to sing now with the stems, I can just easily take out the vocals, and they they have their phone, they can look up the words and sing. That's cool, and you know one of the things I have had. Let me ask you guys this a follow-up question. And I've done this um, request of the bride and groom. Uh, when they have someone to sing at a wedding, they have a cousin, brother, sister, whoever it is, to come into the wedding and sing either first dance or walking down the aisle or anything like that. It could be a solstice at the actual ceremony or whatever. Do you support that? Do you have the equipment to support that? Someone comes in and says, hey, uh, my cousin, he's in a rock band and he wants to sing me down the aisle to, let's say, a, a acoustic version of Everlong. And, you know, Foo Fighters actually have that song, acoustic version of Everlong. And I've actually used it for, uh, for a ceremony. Um, it's very, very pretty. And it's funny because Dave Grohl, you know, and, and the Foo Fighters, they're, they're hard rock. They're pretty hard hitting. And also you hear this acoustic version. It's like, wow, Dave has a great understanding of music and has a great variety of stuff and it's fun when he did the the, the, the dgs the whole entire dgs uh album you know hail satin um i thought that was awesome they took you know the bg songs and did the djs and did all the songs did all covers of the bgs and i thought it was just awesome and you know again they, they sound different than, than you know <laughs> than the gibbs and stuff but you hear that and it's like you could tell their passion about it and they enjoyed it but the thing is that when you run into someone who is a cousin, you never know what you get. But if if a bride or groom or a person who's having a party, running the party, they say, hey, we have an employee, we have a cousin, we have whatever that wants to sing at the wedding. Not do karaoke, but actually want to sing at your party or at your wedding or at whatever you're doing, the event. Would you support that? And do you support that? And can you support that? So I'm going to start with DJ Brantley in Wisconsin this one here uh someone comes to you and says hey i have brother sister and uncle phil and blank here that wants to sing at my event can you do that and can you support them on that i have done it a lot in the past and uh 
Do I do it? Yeah. I mean, of course I do charge more for it because nine times out of 10, that means I've got to bring an actual musician set up, be it guitar. You know, they want to play from their guitar, sing into a mic. Uh, with that, you know, I'm going to bring them, you know, a floor monitor. I can plug them into any of the, you know, any of my equipment I have, either my tote or my rolling rack case and run sound for them. But then I've got to run sound as well and mix you know, as a sound engineer, not as a DJ now. And with that, I've got to see what kind of equipment they have. Um, one thing I hate, hate isn't the best word to use, loathe perhaps, are musicians who, and it's because I've, I've been a musician my entire life, longer than I've been a DJ. If I'm showing up somewhere to play at anything, I'm not bringing a guitar that doesn't have a pickup. I'm not bringing, you know, I'm not asking whoever I'm going to be working with for sound requirements, do you have a quarter inch cable? Do you have all, everything I'll need? And more often than not, you will find people that want to play be the ceremony musician or play one or two songs for a bride and groom at some point are so inexperienced that it becomes more work to do their little bit and it becomes to do like a ceremony, a ceremony setup. So I'm charging a minimum of 500 bucks to do that. Cause now I, if they sound bad, it falls on me. If, if, you know, I, so I have to bring that in with all that gear and more often than not, most couples are really cool with it. I've even had, you know, couples because they know I play and I do advertise. I mean, I do offer it. I don't advertise it, but a lot of couples know I play and they've asked me to play ceremonies, social hour and all of that. And I'll even give them the option. I can play it on mandolin or guitar. And with that, my preferred instrument is mandolin of the two because it's that big. But if, if I have to bring my guitar out, I've got a really expensive Gibson, which, again, I don't like bringing out the house very often anymore. But if I'm doing your ceremony, I'm charging you 300 bucks as your musician, plus my regular ceremony fee. So it boils out to like 600 bucks for me to be your ceremony musician. And similarly, if you bring somebody else along. Okay. So yeah, again, I I do charge extra for that service, and I've done. Uh, see, this year we had this year we had a guy did country music. Uh, he has a guitar, quarter inch of his guitar into my system, and then a wireless microphone in my system, and then run a compressor. <laughs> this, the nice thing about the uh, the Pioneer XZ, because the way the microphone system is on that, you can actually put on to one microphone or two microphones or. On the main, you can add compressor. You can add all those uh, FXs on the uh, the mixer for the uh, microphone. So I did a little work with it, worked with him, tried it out, sounded perfect, sounded great, and it knocked it out of the house. But again, I get, I understand. You know, again, I charge extra for it as well. So out in Ohio, Dwayne, do you support someone coming in saying, "Hey, my cousin, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, my dog, whatever." wants to sing uh, songs for me walking down the aisle or uh, for dinner or for whatever. Do you support that? And if so, do uh, you charge for it or what do you do? Well, I I usually just go ahead and do it. If it's simple, if it's a straightforward, almost like when they do toast or whatever, as long as they, um, only thing I ask for, if they're doing a particular song, if I have that song, so I, I can make sure I have that version that they're going to sing. Other than that, I don't try to do anything deep. I don't, I don't want to get involved because it's I'm already like got to concentrate on getting my stuff together. But yeah, at the party, like that again at the birthday party, the fourth birthday party, um, the lady's daughter rap, so she had like her instrumental track and then. I just gave her a microphone and she did what she did. But I can do sound because I do the sound at our um, school programs. The sound and I do the music and all. I do the whole subbing. But I don't voluntarily, you know, do it if I don't have to because I'm a one, I'm only one person. And that that's, that's more a strain on me. Okay. All right. So, oh, a cool thing just chimed in. Says I don't support it because it takes time away from me DJing a full gig. I don't like working with other musicians. Uh, I, I I can understand that sometimes. Again, uh, DJ Brentley, he said that you know sometimes musicians and he's a musician himself can be 
difficult to deal with. They're prima donnas or that they're unprepared. And that's the two things that uh, I've seen that too. And I've always have preparedness and I always treat them with respect because again, the bridegroom is asking for this person to do stuff and I work with them. And if something's not going right, I, I try to go, okay, how do I overcome this? How do I fix this? And have them, you know, say, oh, yeah, well, let's do this and have, give them options for things too. But a lot of times it all boils down to a uh, cool thing is how you also approach it too and how you approach the, uh, the person. Uh, so Jeff in North Carolina, do you uh, support uh, someone singing at a, a wedding or at a uh, event? And if so, do you charge extra for it? And do you do full support or just partial? Uh, yeah, I mean, I support it if, um, you know, if they're going to have somebody that's a relative or an uncle or a father or whatever, uh, want to sing a song. I mean, if they let me know in advance, you know, I can have a mic ready, you know, on a, on a mic stand where they can, you know, you know, get to it and, and I can have it, you know, ready to roll. If they just come up to me and say, Hey, <laughs> you know, can somebody sing something? You know, it depends. I will probably you know, cross check that with the bride or the groom first. But um, yeah, if they let me know uh, far enough in advance uh, and if it's going to be a little complicated setup, if they've got a guitar and, you know, for instance, and a, a microphone for singing, you know, I can bring the mixer and an extra mic, you know, I can you know set it up to where, you know, it's decent. You know, if it means a, a lot to them, absolutely. I'd probably charge a little extra for the extra setup. Um, but that, you know, at a wedding, you know, it's all about, you know, making, making the bride happy and the bride's mom and dad happy. Those are the big things. So yeah, if it's important to him, I'd be glad to do it. Okay. Um, let's see, Matt, what about you? Um, I do, um, I've had people ask to have their instruments plugged in, um, or if they're singing, I charge for it. I mean, it's fine. I'll do it. Um, but then I've also had one where they wanted me to mic up a whole four piece, like acoustic band plus a singer. And I'm just like, I don't do that. Like I could do one instrument, maybe one singer, maybe an instrument and a drum. Like I, I'm not a audio engineer. I don't know how to make them sound good. That's beyond my pay grade. I have people that can do it. Normally when I quote that price, they're just like, Oh, we'll just do it acoustics. So, uh, <laughs> fine with me um if they if it's just somebody singing like that's the thing is my ceremony system included in my price is you get the mackie thump go you get one wireless handheld on a stand that's it um, an ipad for music that's it if you want anything else beyond that it's going to be a charge um i brought out a lapel this weekend and now i will never use a lapel for the rest of my life because i don't know how to make them sound good they all suck they all sound like garbage and i'm just over it the only lapel that ever sounded good was believe it or not the sure pgx digital um which is still the best sure product i've owned was the pgx series uh wireless never had a drop out uh until after three years then it just stops working but um that's a sure product for you so the only I, way to get a lapel mic to really sound good is you need a soundboard and all of that and you need to actually have a good half hour 45 minutes before anybody's out where you're at dial it out bring what you can out boost like the lows and you know clean you know compress yeah maybe throw a little verb on it but you're not going to be able to make a lab sound anything like a handheld anywhere even close no i, I even I, I even got the I re3 do it all, but... i do it all the time all my ceremonies i do all lab uh two of them one for the groom one the officiant and they usually you know again most of the time nine times out of ten they sound really good and in the tenth time Usually more adjustment. Again, it's it's like anything else. You need to adjust EQ and adjust things. And yeah, you may have to add in a, you know a little bit of uh, a slight delay or something like that to, to overcome some tones. But it's nothing ever everything really crazy. But it, it's you're working with good stuff. You should be able to get a good sound out of it. And labs are labs are harder than handhelds. There's no doubt about. It. They're much more sensitive because they're omnidirectional, versus most microphones are more of a directional item. So it, it is a harder thing to do, but I do lab I, every single wedding I do. It, it's it's labs for the officiant and for one half of the couple, you know, and it always works out really really well. I I just had a wedding I did a couple weeks ago. 
the the couple was really super quiet. I was boosting as much as I possibly could. I didn't want to add a, a interference, so I went as high as I could. And it, it is what it is. I didn't want boosting higher, but it, people heard it, but not as loud. That was the only bad thing. That's nothing I could do. Even if I had a handheld microphone. They heard they heard their voices and they dropped down very quickly. So it's it's just one of the things. It's it takes time to play with it and get to know it and understand the product and understand how close you are to things. And frequencies with labs are crazy. It is different than a handheld. And that's one thing you got oh, to battle with. You're going to see Brentley? Oh, by far. They're but they're a completely different beast than a handheld. Just like, you know, using a shotgun mic or a condenser is going to be completely different than using, you know, an SM50, an SM58 or a Beta versus like an AT2020 or something. Every mic is going to have you know, I mean, I would honestly, in a perfect world, if we had to use a handheld mic or a mic on a stand, I would love to go to the old fashioned route and use something similar like bluegrass musicians use, where you just drop a condenser in the middle of everybody. And when everybody sings, you beef up to it a little bit. When you're playing on lead, you walk into it a little bit more. But then when you're doing everything in the background, everybody's in a proper circle around it. So it picks up everything. That would be in a perfect world for a ceremony, but everybody and their grandma would be you, you, you drop that out there and they're gonna be like, What the hell is this? Just talk, it'll pick you up. But no one would really understand that. There is a really cool um lav mic that I've been looking at, but the microphone itself is $700. The microphone itself that that's just uh, the microphone. I've been looking at it, it's pretty cool, but you know. It's one of the things that you have to do what's best for your business and you got to do what's best for what you feel is. And sometimes, you know, again, there's a lot of people who are not fans for labs versus I like them because they they, they 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 don't see them in pictures. Um, I don't see a stand in pictures. I, I hate how that looks. That's me personally. What you guys want to do, it's up to what you want to do. Um, but the thing is that, you know, it, it is more work to do. But once you start getting used to it, it's like anything else. It's, once you get used to doing that work and doing that, it takes me a couple minutes to tune it in, to EQ it, and boom, I'm done and over with. Uh, Jeff, when you do ceremonies, do you do labs or do you do handheld? Two labs. Normally, I've got two handhelds, but um, uh, you know, most of the time it's it's labs. I mean, I've I've only had one instance where they requested a uh, handheld just because the. Uh, the minister, she did not want to put a, uh, a lava on. She didn't really have a place on her dress. So I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, we'll just uh, throw a handheld up there. So, but yeah, most dress of the time tape. lost. Dress tape. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's, it, it's, I, I put um, loves on people every day for my day job yep. and working in television. And uh, it's easy to do if you know where to put them and how to do them and where to hide them. Um, but you know, some people just, you know, just don't want to deal with them. And I, I, I'm fine with that, you know, for a ceremony, as long as, as long as the people in the back row can hear, it's all that matters. Yep. And what about you, Dwayne? Are you uh, a lav guy or are you a handheld mic guy for ceremonies? Um, I would prefer the handheld because I can't <laughs> get a good sound out of my, um, labs and all that stuff. I tried it before, but it's like I get feedback or something weird. So I just rather deal with the handheld. Yeah, it, again, it's it's it, it is a trick to do. And again, Jeff will Jeff's probably be doing it longer than I have because he's been in, in television mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, but I've been doing labs for God, fifteen, fourteen years, fifteen years because I had the business for nineteen years. So yeah, I switched over uh, fifteen years ago. And I have not looked back. You know, it took some time getting used to it. I, 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 not weddings, but practicing with it and reading things. And now with YouTube and other channels, um, there's ways to look at things. And one of the great things is actually Sweetwater. Sweetwater has a lot of information about microphones, period, uh, on their YouTube channel and as well as on their, um, their webpage. And they actually run some seminars and stuff like that. You can read uh, stuff that may help you out. We can use a regular microphone, make it sound better, which is a great thing. That's a great resource right there. Uh, cool thing says he uses both a handheld and a lapel. Um, he uses a Shure PG58 handheld and a lapel for it. So 
Um, so he uses both for uh, for uh, weddings. So it's when I, I do have a handheld, but usually that's on a stick off to the side for readings. But the efficient and one half of the couple, I put a lapel on, and it's it's one of the things in pictures. It looks fantastic. Plus, again, like for it's a little work, and I had to teach uh, our employee uh, tricks how to do it. And I actually taught Tracy some of the tricks. And they actually, this past weekend, the wedding that uh, we did, uh, I wasn't there at the ceremony. Actually, our employee, uh, Vinny, was at the ceremony. Uh, he uh, he did it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very proud of what he did because I heard the video, Trace recorded video. And actually, I dropped a gig log with that, some of the video in there. And you hear the official talking clear as day. Um, and that's that's one or uh, two lapel microphones. That's Audio Technica microphones. And actually, the labs themselves are Audio Technica microphones. So they're the original audio uh, microphone that came from Audio Technica. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a hard it's a hard game to play. Um, next question. <laughs> uh, also from DJ Aga, um, I'm in the San Antonio Austin area. So he's down in Texas, and I, I think he's originally from New York because he said about the Buffalo Bills, I believe, before for football. Um, so, uh, and most DJs don't offer photo booth in their package. Uh, anybody here offer photo booth in their package? Anybody have photo booth? Matt does. Every weekend. Really does. Every single weekend. Okay. So, Best investment. Best investment. So I don't I I don't offer I offer it but I don't offer it. I offer it through one of my friends who has it. I can get it and say, okay, you know, I I, I pay him. I just charge a couple, pay him. He comes and sets it up and he runs it, and it's a separate thing. But it's one point of contact. They do everything through me. Um. So this usually is a totally separate vendor. This is what he's saying about the photo uh, photo booth. So my comment about uh, the 20, uh, 2500 to $3,000 price for weddings, ceremony reception was without photo booth, just DJ and MC services. So he is saying that in his area of Texas, that he's charging 2500 to $3,000 for the reception itself, um, ceremony reception, which is about sure. almost where I'm at too for depending on enhancements and what people add. Um, you know, two thousand dollars is like kind of like a minimum for me uh for stuff, but it's getting more and more closer a uh, higher uh higher up because people add enhancements, you know, be it gobo, be it whatever. Um and that's without a photo booth. Now uh Matt, because you and Brantley both have photo booths, question of both to you both you guys you offer when you have your package and you add photo booth on there, does that add in a good amount of money or do you include that into like your top tier package? If I walked into your door and said, Hey, Matt, or Hey, uh, Brentley, I want you to DJ my wedding and I want your top package. Do you throw the photo booth in there or is it an additional charge on top of that package? So I'll go with Matt first. Um, I, I mean, it's addition, it's an additional charge. Uh, we do it for two fifty an hour if they just want our standard photo booth. And then if they want one of those floral walls with the neon sign, we do it for, I don't know. What is it? Uh, it's like a thousand dollars for, uh, whatever. So 300 and something an hour. So we do it off a three hour package and, uh, rarely do I, if, if people want a photo booth, Booth, it pushes them to my signature package which is almost four grand which includes the photo booth and a bigger setup so they see that that it has the photo booth and they're like oh we get all this other stuff too so if they want the photo booth more often than not they're booking that more expensive package so i'm fine with that um i do get it occasionally where they add it to my regular pretty much base standard package it's not that often um but i i will tell you that every single wedding i've done this year if they've had a photo booth, it's always been with us. So um, I know that my prices are perfect to where they're at. And um, unless for some for some reason, some people think that photo booths are 
in a hot commodity and they have to book them a year and a half out, which is like the furthest thing from the truth. There's a million photo booths out there. So uh, I'm always surprised when they say, oh, we already booked our photo booth. But you haven't booked your DJ yet. But if they want a photo booth, they're booking it with us. So uh, it pushes them to that higher package, which was kind of my goal um, with all my prices and packages is instead of charging for uplights, I just bump up the price and include them um, so that they think they're getting a better value, which they are. But um, that's just the way I've done it. I don't do the whole base pricing plus enhancements. I just here's the most popular enhancements in these packages. And you could always add or remove things here or there to kind of make your own package. So that's yeah, what works I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of similar to you. The, the package hat includes things like uh, my goal package includes head table up lighting. Uh, but if you want full room up lighting, there's additional charts. You can get the goal package, add full room up lighting and then add ceremony. And again, you can add those enhancements. Uh, but I think, you know, so if you want to go to the top package, you can still add a few enhancements to that as well. Um, and people go to the top package because they want to have the gobo. They want to have more stuff. And they're like, well, why do I go to a, a step down for, you know, $500 more? I get more stuff with the top package. So they go into the top package. Um, DJ Bradley, what about you? How do you do it? How do you do, um, how do you do your photo booth? Well, recently I've stopped, I got rid of my basic packages. So I'm only offering my premium setups and all of that. So alongside of that, if you want a photo booth, it's an extra charge. And I think it's six, six not 49 for four hours, 749 for five hours, something like that. And if you, and again, then, you know, if you want sparks and all that, those are the add-ons I'm keeping separate from my premium in package because certain venues aren't going to allow smoke or sparks if you can let's add that in same with the photo booth i mean everybody will allow it but do you want it or not and i don't want to offer it to somebody who doesn't really want it in the package if you really want it pay for it we'll throw it all together so i think if you wanted like my top package with photo booth my toadmatic and sparks and all that you're looking at just under 5k i think is what i'm i if you put it all together give or take Okay. And then, uh, Jeff, out there in North Carolina, do you do photo booth? You said no, but uh, do you offer photo booth? Do you offer it through a friend or you just say, hey, go find your own photo booth operator? Yep. Uh, I do not offer it. Uh, it's not in my packages. Uh, I have not invested in that. I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Uh, if they want it, they can. Uh, there's plenty of places that offer it that they can um, They can, you know, choose to do that. Uh, um but yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's several events I've done. They've just uh, hired it from someone, you know, someone who offers it either standalone or that type of thing. And, and that's fine. So I, I, I'm uh, mostly a one man band. Um, so it's uh, in a very, on occasion, I'll take my son. So I, I don't really want to get any more involved with, you know, too many other things going on. Uh, so, so I keep it simple. So yeah, that's just where my business model lies. And, and you know, just like uh, most people, like Matt as well as yourself, you have your your SUV and you have so much space in your SUV. The one nice thing, like Brentley has, Brentley has does have a van, uh, which he does have. He has a cargo van, and of course, I have a Sprinter, so I have more room. But I still would shy away from offering my own photo booth because then, where do you split your time at? Kind of like you, Jeff. It's like I, I have enough to deal with. Do I want to add a photo booth? And, you know, a lot of times you need an attendant uh, for photo booth. You know, I'm sure I could hire, uh, you know, even my own daughter be like, but a lot of times she's working uh, during the times I need her. And then the other part is that, uh, you know, it, it's additional, it's additional headache sometimes. So I'd much rather sub it out to someone else. Dwayne, what about you out there in Ohio? Do you have a photo booth? Do you offer photo booth? Do you... Uh, do you just say, hey, you know, find uh, food booths R us and uh, hook up with them? Or do you have someone you uh, you uh, refer to? No, I don't do the photo booth thing. Um, but I do have people that have come and um, did like the 360 kind of photo booth thing. So I'll pass their numbers off to them. It's like two people that I refer um, people to. Yep. So it's like, yeah, I haven't got that far yet in my DJ career. <laughs> Okay. And again, look for there's there's 
there's different thoughts here of doing things and different packages. And I, I think what you're doing out there in Austin, you're doing a, you know, for, you know, 2,500 or 3,000 and not offering photo booth. I think you're, you know, again, you had to decide for yourself, but I think you're making a decent dollar. I hope so. Uh, I don't know what the price of gallon milk is in your area or gasoline as well. Things you got to look at what your cost is for running. Uh, but the thing is that it's like anything else, you know, you have to make sure you make money. And again, if you want to offer photo booth, you know, that's entirely up to you. If you want to add that in there, or you can always partner with a company. Like where I have a friend who has a photo booth business. I'm partner with them. When I have a customer that says, Hey, I want photo booth. Oh, no problem. I know it's price. You know, I add it to their package. Hey, you want a photo booth? Any package you get with us, DJ, it's $800 for photo booth. I, t you know, I, I keep a hundred bucks. Rest goes to him for photo booth. It's a basic self use photo booth. The tablet goes up and it's all digital. Now, if you want printed, it's additional charge. Cause that's the other thing. Some people want those prints. Some people don't. So I give that as an option because he gives an option to me. He wants prints is an extra $250. So if you want prints, it's ten fifty for you know for the print. So it's one of the things that you can decide what you want to do for your business. And but having a, a, a strategic partner, I have to talk right, a strategic partner <laughs> uh, that you can lean on to and go, hey, you know what, this person offers photo booth, and have that you know information you can give to them and say, hey, you know, contacts also, or you can do what like I do. I get a hold of them. I say, hey, let me find out if it's available. I go send them a message, a text message or uh, email real quick. And he get back to me fairly quickly. And once I know that, okay, I take care of the customer and I pay him directly um, when the customer pays me. So he gets it out there. He gets it. They do the photo booth, done and over with. And it, it's, it's one of the things that I actually have two people. I have one north, one south. So uh, the girl who owns one in the south, same thing. I, I get a hold of her and say, hey, are you available on such a day for photo booth? She says, yes or no. It's her and her uh, her husband. Uh, it's a t their team. And, hey, are you available? Yeah. Um, I know her charge. I, you know, I, I did put a little money on top just to make, a, you know, for admin uh, fee basically and, you know, take care of it and do all the logistics, give them all the information. They're paid. They're taken care of. They're happy. And again, they're they're I know them. They're they do a good job, and this way take the customer out of the market, and that way they're not going to look at other places. Because a lot of DJs, again, you're in Austin, you're seeing it now offer, but up here in Chicago at least, there's a lot of DJs who offer photo booth, and I don't want to lose someone. Go to another DJ, they find DJ no skills. That's like you know, oh, I could do your wedding for eight hundred dollars, and give you a free photo booth, and I'll give you you know wash dishes and walk the dog and clean your rug and whatnot for $800. You know, it, it's one of the things I don't want to jeopardize that for them to find DJ no skills. So, and then uh, Hunter said photo booths are out of his level expertise. So he trusts others to provide a photo booth, which again, that's not a bad thing. You know, it's, everyone has to do what's, what's best for their business. And that's, and every market's different. There's no right or wrong answer on that. But I definitely would say that uh, for in my market in Chicago, which if it's similar to your area in Texas, um, I definitely would say that $2,500, $3,000 uh, per uh, gig for a wedding for ceremony reception is a respectable price, a very respectable price. And again, I, I'm sure just like every area in market, there's people who are cheaper and there's people who are more money. Now, uh, here I would probably say, and, and Matt and I were talking a little bit earlier before the show, um about uh djs and not about pricing just about uh i i feel the djs here uh for the most part are your and again the guys here they're all djs and they all work real hard including dj um cool thing but i feel the djs here are probably your more uh medium to upper price djs because the fact that we look at it as a real business not just doing it for beer money so it's one of those things that, you know, if you're in that area and that's right there is, is the middle or higher end for pricing, I would probably say you're pretty good. If you're in a low end in your market, you may want to reevaluate what are you offering. If you're doing a lot of work, you're not charging a lot, you know, that, that's not how you want to run a business. You want to be competitive with pricing. There's always going to be someone cheaper, but what are you offering? What level of service you're offering? 
And you got to look at it this way. You can go to a store, you can go to Walmart, which offers great products at a very low price. They're, you know, for the most part, not a lot of things, a discounter and they're, they have a price points for stuff versus going to Target. could be right across the street. I have a Walmart and a Target right across the street from each other. They carry a lot of times the same product. Target's usually a little bit more money than Walmart for the same item. Sometimes they're similar, but Target is a little bit more of a premium, you know, store versus Walmart. They're both discounters, but one's a premium discounter. One's kind of, you know, it's more basic discounter. I don't step so, I don't step foot in Walmart. It's disgusting. <laughs> there's I, I, they don't they don't have them anywhere in the nice cities of Orange County. There's one in Tustin, which is like right <laughs> on the edge of Irvine and South Orange County. There isn't any other ones anywhere in South Orange County. They're all like so like North Orange County is a little bit lower income, so to say, but there's one Walmart near me and it's like all the way like right in a corner at the end of the toll road that's like super inconvenient but uh that one's not that bad but the one that's in irvine which is really in tustin is like it's you walk in and you're like this does not seem like it belongs in this area just like based off of like the surrounding area it's like surrounded by a bunch of luxury apartments and new buildings and then there's this walmart that's like half falling apart and there's trash all over the place and loitering and it's just uh, i don't know i've never been i would i would probably say the walmart's by us they're you know i i don't usually go into walmart tracy goes much more than i do uh i know our walmart uh for a while tracy was complaining about stuff about stuff being in the wrong places but you know they they they're open 24 hours uh they're crazy busy but uh usually they're pretty they're pretty decently clean. I like the one that's a little further east of me, a little north of me um, in Addison. Uh, I feel they're better than the one over here in Bloomingdale. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just me. Uh, but the thing is that the uh, the Walmarts here, for the most part, the ones I, I've gone to uh, in the nicer areas, they carry a little bit nicer stuff, too. And they they, they know they're in a nicer area. Are there Walmarts in areas that are more, you know, lower income? Sure. Again, they're they're a discounter. They're gonna they're gonna try just like there's Dollar General stores. Um, there I have a couple near me, but if I go further east or for, uh, way southeast or north uh, northeast, when I get closer to the city, there can be more of them. Not because of population, just because there's more working class people and they you know they they're looking for bargains versus where I'm at. It's it's a little bit more uh, white collar. And they're, you know, you have a dollar share here or there, but you go further east, there's a lot more. So, yeah, there is a difference in the marketing stuff. And that's that's the thing you got to look at is what you're marketing for, what kind of clientele you're trying to attract. And, you know, that's one of the things I, I see, Brentley, I know how, how you do, Matt, Jeff and Dwayne and even Hunter. We, you know, we want to attract customers that uh, are going to don't mind, they, they are going to not mind our pricing and understand that, you know, we're not going to be the cheapest DJ in the area for a reason. And that is because I, I feel all of us are given premium product and giving out our best we possibly can and are passionate about what we do. And that's the thing is that when I, when I talk to everyone here on the show offline or anywhere, everyone here is very passionate about DJing. And that's why we do the show is to, to share our passion with everyone out there. And I appreciate you guys watching the show either here on Twitch or on YouTube and do me a favor, if you haven't done so already, like I said before, press that like button, hit that smash, that uh, follow button, you know, subscribe, and then go ahead and make sure you get a bell icon dinged in. And if you're watching this and haven't done so already, I, again, I got a lot of people who are watching that and not subscribed, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to subscribe so you know when exactly we go live with new shows here, uh, on, not only on YouTube, but also over on Twitch, too. But, you know, it's it's just one of the things that with you guys, everyone here, I appreciate everything you guys do. And I'm going to follow one last question for the group, and we're going to end at that. Um, when you have, uh, what was the question here? Uh, I just saw. Uh, what was the one question? Where did it go off to? Someone asked. No, it was a quick one. No, I lost it. <laughs> um, oh, contracts. 
Um, here's a quick question for contracts. Do you do digital contracts or do you do physical contracts? I mean, you do actually mail out a contract to someone and have them mail it back to you, or do you do digital contracts and have them, you know, you send them an email, they sign it, they scan it on a computer or take a picture with their phone and they send it to you uh, either via text or they send it back to you via email. Uh, what do you do? Matt, do you do physical paper or do you do digital? Uh, digital. Who uses the mail anymore? It's the most unreliable thing there is, USPS. Um, I, it's all digital. So, I, I mean, I, I don't use DocuSign or anything like that. But like I said, I only do business with people that have iPhones. So, I uh, send them the contract and tell them you could sign it right there in your iPhone's mail app by pressing markup. Add your signature, boom, 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 done. I get it back, boom, send out the door, countersign it, reply all, takes 10 seconds. They have an Android, it's a lot harder than that. Um, but if 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 they have another device or if they want to print, sign, scan, that's on them. I just try to present them with the easiest way. So I have a nice little three-clip thing that I include in my emails when I send the contracts. If I know they have an iPhone, because I usually text them and so I say, hey, you know, here's the easiest way to sign this and send it back. Digital signature works, um, it's legally binding. So um, that's that's how I prefer. I still do get people that are like, I don't know how to send this back. I'm like, well, just just print it, take a picture. I've got a PDF converter. Uh, it'll take your image and convert it to a PDF. I'll countersign it. We'll be good to go. And that's how I do it. So okay. I don't think I've ever mailed it. The only time we do that is if we do school dances and we don't mail it, but they mail us a check and we require that we get that check at least like a week before the event. And usually they mail a contract with that check and the invoice just because you know, it's what they do. But digital is is good for me. Yeah, I, I, I probably say probably 99% of us is digital. I do have a PO box for the business. So that way, if someone really wants to send something, be it a card or be it whatever, they can send right to the PO box um, and it will go get it. Sometimes people want to pay with a check still. It happens. It's, you know, in 2023, people still want to pay by checks here and there. I have no problem with that whatsoever. DJ Brentley, how do you do it? Do you send a digital uh, or do you send physical? I try to do everything digitally. Um, Ever After Entertainment uses Chet Cherry. And, you know, uh, the, the portal, whatever you want, customer service thing. And, yeah, it's a godsend in a lot of ways. There's some things I'd like to change on it, which me and the business partner are talking about. Change the interface. It's a little bit more user-friendly when you're doing all your, you know, song form, you know, finalizations and all that. But for contracts and all that, I prefer digital. Yeah, uh, Bureau, um, uh, being up here where I'm at, there are people that still want to pay with cash or check. They still want to do paper contracts. And I'm fine with that. I mean, there. who am I to not, you know, complain about how the hell someone wants to pay? especially to book me. I mean, there are older folks in there. Like I've had grandparents paying for weddings, you know, and people that are the boomer generation or older, they're really not into putting their money in the, you know, playing on banking online or doing any of that. They want hard receipts, hard invoices. And yeah, for them, I'm more than happy to do so. Okay. But the digital thing is so much easier. God. Yes. And I like, I use Square for credit card processing, which is great. And the one thing like I do, um, because we keep physical files uh, for every, you know, for every file, we have physical paperwork. And when we get a contract, we print out, you know, on the printer, that contract when someone sends it to us, be it a photograph or a, uh, a scan or whatever. So we have a physical copy with our paperwork just in case, just in case, you know, anyone ever question me? Thought that I have proof they have a contract for that uh, that that wedding. Uh, Dwayne, do you do digital or do you do physical media for contracts? I do digital. I use HoneyBook to do all, like all my bookings and um, contracts, and they can pay right online through on uh, the HoneyBook app. Okay, you make it easy and simple. And then Jeff, what about you? Do you uh, do digital or do you physical media? Uh, it's all digital. Yeah, I, I have not um, actually printed a uh, uh, contract in probably six years or more. So it's been a while, a long time. Yeah, it, it's we we just printed a contract the other uh, for a client. 
they never sent us their contract for whatever reason slipped through the cracks. We had an in-person meeting with them. Their wedding's coming up on the 21st and we had them to sign the contract. They already, they already paid us and everything that way, you know, so they're, they're, they're locked in, but we, we don't, we want a physical contract, uh, you know, a, a contract written. So we printed it out, you know, gave them a physical copy. So here you go. That's us. But, um, you know, I live where we, we print the copy out here, put it in their file. We actually have physical files. I have a, a couple of filing cabinets and we keep it. So, um, but the other thing, uh, Hunter says, uh, contracts are more work than I'm prepared to do. Word of mouth is easier for me. And it comes well, people cancel on them. <laughs> contract contracts do protect you, Hunter. That's one thing you want to do. Um, all right, I got it. It's dinner time, so I'll oh, catch you. Oh, man, later. What, what's, for, what's for dinner, real quick? Uh, it's the girlfriend made a spiral spaghetti squash pasta i don't know it's like a healthy dish we're trying to be healthy we're, we're looking at apartments too to, to move in but oh well, good good for you well, man good for you that's yeah, the pr prices are uh not not great but they're not absurd it's just well, like trying to find a place that's uh fits all the boxes and what what does she wants what, what does a apartment in socal run now the nice one that we really liked was 49 for a two bedroom uh 4900 um the more reasonable one that we also liked was 36 37 so um it's uh i mean i don't know that's that's like normal ish here i mean it, i don't know i haven't rented for a little while so uh but I also was, uh, what's a, what's a house value you run uh, 2 million i'm a millennial we can't afford houses <laughs> but i'm just saying what's a house average house run by you in so my sister though, my my sister's got a nice place her mortgage i think is like around four and she's in like Sherman Oaks, which is like a kind of a suburb of LA. So um, it, it depends. I mean, just, but the interest rates now are crazy. Oh, yeah, interest like rates when are she, high, got hers, but... she got hers for three or two, two, seven or something. So now it's six or more. So it's just the, the housing market is just. Well, not here, here's the thing to think about that for mortgages, just to give you an idea to think about if, if the mortgage rates go down, you can refinance later and down the road and get a lower interest right. rate. So it's got to refinance. Yeah. So cool. enjoy your dinner tonight. Everyone else enjoy yourselves. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. I appreciate everyone here. And again, thanks for all turning in and we're going to jump off here, but we don't have Hunter to say good night. So Matt, you want to hit it for Hunter? <laughs> Peace. There right. you go. Hunter, that goes to you, brother. Hope you feel better. All right. Catch you guys later. All right, see ya. See you later.